Hello YouTube and welcome to episodes 3 and 4 in the Chainsaw Man Reaction Series. We've got a double episode today, please be excited. Very cool, what? It's weird, right? I can't do too many of these, otherwise I'll end up like back where the show is up to at the moment. I think it's up to episode 8 at current time, so we can't really go that far ahead. But I would like to throw in a double episode every now and again, just to, you know, keep up pace and that kind of thing. Either way, there was plenty of comments from last week, so I'm going to dive into those and see what you guys thought about episode two. Got the first comment here by G-Bird, who says, simply, Horns Girl. And yeah, I can't help but agree. Uh, yeah, power. Hopefully we get more power this episode. I'm expecting it. I'll go into a few predictions later. But yeah, of course, that's she's my favorite so far in her limited screen time. The next comment here by Y. There is a saying in my language which I think perfectly encapsulates Denji's situation. Closest translation would be something like, from puddle to mud. From being viewed like a dog to being treated like a dog. His situation hasn't changed that much. Denji just can't catch a break. I think this is really interesting, right? And and it talks to, into this dream thing that Denji has going on, right? So his dream initially was just to get to this level. My life is so much better than what it was before. Then now I'm happy. I can stop. But yeah, humans don't stop like that. That's the thing, right? Is he going to be satisfied with this status quo with Makima for forever? It remains to be seen, but I don't think so. I think we're dreaming a little bigger than that. I've actually seen some videos where people recreate the Denji special, and they said it was actually good. So if this devil hunting job doesn't work out, he might be a food genius. Yeah, this is like a me thing. I'm not big on my sweets. So if I had something that sweet with cinnamon and butter, kind of drenched on top of a piece of bread. Yeah, no, I'm not. It's not my bag. Well, I don't think there really is a need to say anything else. I hope the other comments will try not to over-explain the more subtle things because I think you'll get them in time if you haven't already. Keep up the good work. P.S. Love the thumbnail. So first with the thumbnail, I tried to go a bit funnier. I don't know if I'm funny, but my thumbnails kind of suck. So anyway, it's whatever. I'm, I'm glad somebody liked it. I thought it was funny. And yeah, that's the whole thing with the comments. Try not to stay spoilery. I'd like to think I'm pretty switched on and can pick up when people are like subtly think, like talking about something. I ran into this a lot with, is it this hand? Yeah, this. People always like to subtly spoil the thing behind me, Kaguya-sama, uh, and think they're slick. They ain't slick at all. So don't spoil it. Don't even be subtle about it. It's fine. Uh, if I'm at the end of the show and still not getting things, then maybe jump in. But like, I don't know. Let me watch the show. That's the whole point of the channel. Anyway, that was a bit of a rant, but sorry about that. Thank you for the comment. Why? Next comment here by Simon. So, there is one scene in Chapter 2. It would have taken around 3 to 4 minutes. It shows Denji is not really all out into being Makima's dog, but he is ready to run away right here, right now. It was cut from the adaption, so who cares? Well, I care. That would be a very interesting scene and change a lot of the interpretations of kind of what I was thinking about Makima. It's, it's not all sunshine and roses is my kind of implication there. But again, a lot of the show still has to play out. Everyone on Twitter simps, period. They certainly do. Thanks for the comment there. Next comment here by Virginia. About the OP, what Makima is feeding Denji is a snail infected by a specific parasite. I saw it on a nature special like 20 years ago and never forgot. Once the parasite infects the snail, it basically controls the mind and makes the snail leave its daytime hiding spots. They get eaten by a passing bird the parasite now propagates in the bird and is spread through feces. Now that doesn't bode well for old, for old Makima. That's not a good omen, is it? If she's feeding that to Denji? Interesting. We're going to have to wait and see, but it's, it's, it's not looking good. Next comment here by Benjamin Lee. When Denji coughed up blood, he mentioned his mother's heart disease, which I assumed is the reason he was coughing up blood. I guess when Pochita replaced Denji's heart, it solved the problem. They haven't brought this up in the anime episodes I've seen so far, so I'm guessing it's not that important. Yeah, I was guessing probably that too. It'd be a bit lame that he kind of still had a heart disease when he's also part devil. It's a bit of a lame way to die. A fun little detail that I saw in another video's comments is that Denji said he wanted to hug Makima. Again, he used the Daku. Now, while it does mean to hug, it also apparently has a somewhat common euphemism for having sex. Aki's reaction after Denji said that is way funnier now. I can't help but agree. That's actually hilarious. So he thought it was, uh, it was way more intimate than that. Hence the exaggerated, almost like cartoon-esque reaction. Very fun. 
And then Virginia comes back with a new comment about four days later, so that's a bit interesting. Must have been thinking about power. Either way, he, he continues here. Power is kind of a perfectly written character. She's a demon, right? So of course she's all about grandiose displays and being up her own ass. But if you take that mindset and show her literally everything else life has to offer, she's super easily distracted. I love her to death for that. She's a fucking sociopath by environment, learning how to chill. Her curiosity and engagement are very endearing. Kind of love heart emoji. Uh, yeah, I, I said this like two days ago in Monogatari, right? You, how you make character interesting, right, is you give them a contradiction. It's all you have to do. Well, it get, it's, it's the first steps there anyway. It's not all you have to do, obviously. Otherwise, every character would be interesting. But anyway, I digress. My point being is that power is, you know, as you say, this grandiose demon who looks down on mere humans, but is also intrinsically fascinated by everything she sees and hyperactive and running all over the place and... Again, like, curious, right? Childlike. Again, this, you know, I see two things that don't mesh together. That makes me want to see more of it. I don't know. I don't know if I'm making any sense with this, but it's what I believe anyway. If you have a stock standard hero who has no kind of interesting traits to him, no differences in what he's doing, then he's probably a little bit boring. I'd say this works more for your side characters than protagonistic characters, but I digress. Either way, thanks for the comments this week. Just going to jump into a quick little recap of episode 2. Denji is driving with a lady who we learn is called Makima towards the city right after the events of episode 1. Makima uses this opportunity to establish some ground rules with Denji around who's actually in charge in this kind of relationship, as well as feeding and clothing Denji in the process. And when I say feeding, I mean literally feeding. They make it into the city, into what seems to be like the public safety building, I guess we're going to call it, kind of this government branch around demon or devil hunters, I should say. This is where Makima kind of gives Denji a new uniform and asks him to team up with a new character called Hayakawa. Uh, he immediately dislikes Denji for his kind of carefree attitude as well as his interest in Makima. This results in a fight between the two in which Denji initially loses, but after a swift kick to the bollocks which he gives to Hayakawa, he recovers and wins the fight per se, but it kind of continues on and peters out. This is combined with a declaration from Denji that his life has improved so much that he would fight to keep it this way. At this point, we continue some world building and montage stuff, showing Denji and Hayakawa kind of living together. Denji's kind of an awful roommate in this uh, this little montage. There's also a part where the Makima kind of reestablishes their master-servant relationship, promising Denji some reward if he keeps behaving well, whatever behaving well means. Hayakawa and Denji then go off to investigate a case of a fiend with the local police. Denji kills the fiend cleanly, resulting in Hayakawa asking the question regarding why he didn't use his chainsaw man form. Denji reveals that he wanted to give the fiend a painless death. This angers Hayakawa, who reveals his kind of tragic backstory surrounding devils, in which his whole family was killed in front of him by them. He still doesn't believe that Denji is taking it seriously at this point. He asks Denji if he could make friends with a devil, and he says yes. This gives Hayakawa an idea. After Hayakawa kind of leaves Denji alone, he kind of proclaims out that he only gave the fiend a quick death so he wouldn't get blood on the dirty magazines that were littered on the floor. After this, kind of Denji receives his new dream. He dreams a little bit bigger. He wants to touch boobs. It's not exactly a noble dream, but it'll do. When Hayakawa and Denji report back to Makima, Makima assigns Denji a new partner, a rambunctious girl called Power, who also happens to be a fiend. So this is kind of connecting it to that scene from before. This is later revealed to be a bit of a setup by Hayakawa because power has immense power and kind of pushes away all the, the devils in the area, resulting in not a very good hunt, really. It kind of just wards them off. Uh, but she's also kind of nuts, which is revealed by the sea cucumber bit at the end. So she's a bit of a handful and she isn't exactly conducive to devil hunting. So we'll see where this goes from here. Some general predictions going forward, nothing too specific I don't think we can get into yet, but I think we'll get more power intro stuff, as well as maybe some backstory, i.e. why she is a fiend, uh, why she has sentience, she isn't like the other fiend that seemed a little bit too far gone, so we, I wonder why that is the case, maybe it has to do with the strength of the devil that has inhabited her. I think we'll get a larger fight where Chainsaw Man ability comes out because it is the show is called Chainsaw Man and we need to see Chainsaw Man at some point. This will probably either happen in episode 3 or 4. 
And I believe there'll be some kind of reconciliation between Hayakawa and Denji back to where they're on decent-ish terms. Uh, I think this would be an episode four job if I was to pace the show. But again, I'm not in charge. Just before I jump in, just going to do my show stuff. If you like the video, consider liking the video. If you like the video and want to see more, consider subscribing to the channel. Comment below anything you thought about the episode, anything I can do to improve my presentation, comment below. I'm doing follow for follow on Twitter, so follow me on Twitter if you'd like me to follow you back. And Discord, join the Discord, discuss Chainsaw Man or Monogatari or Simpho Gear or anything else or suggest shows or schedule or lots of stuff on Discord. And yeah, now I'm just going to jump into episode 3 of Chainsaw Man right now. Rightio, got episode 3 up here ready to go. Let me pop that up on the screen. Uh, yeah, the first frame I have here has some purple blood in it. So I think uh, I think power got him. Uh, the episode is also 23 minutes and 57 seconds if you wanted to sync up your own copy. If you didn't, there's still the picture and picture down in the description below. And yeah, just going to jump right in now. Going to give it a 3, 2, 1. Ready? 3, 2, 1. Yep, she got him. Made a bit of a mess. Do we not like the mess? Yeah, Makima doesn't like the mess. Oh, really? That's not really her strong suit. Well, yeah, your partners, I guess. Blood Devil. Oh, yeah, right. She uses, like, the blood powers. Hmm. That's not it at all. Do you think Makima surrounds herself with these idiots on purpose? Yeah, come on. Ass. This is a good shot, though. I like the um the field of view. Yes, ma'am. Right away, ma'am. Hmm. Interesting. Yes, ma'am. Right away, ma'am. Still under the boobs, are we? I'd imagine so. So I didn't quite grab that. Why is that like a was it obstructing an actual police case or something? <laughs> Great. Yeah, probably not right this second. She seems interested in some other things. She wants some water or something. Don't attack that cat, please. What is power doing? Being thirsty. Oh no no, she's she loves cats. Okay, that's good. Okay. Didn't seem to hate Makima. Just hate everybody. No, not Meowie. No way. Hmm. <laughs> now you like dogs.
Genji just really speaks his mind, doesn't he? Yeah, that's what I thought you'd say. Okay. He's like, oh my god. <laughs> oh, the music too. Yeah, power's great. I still love how we're flipping this like noble intention, like hero moments into like, oh yeah, his motivation is touching boobs. I think that's funny still. And yeah, into the opening that just slaps. I don't know how we're going to have time to meet all these people in 12 episodes. You know what I mean? Maybe they're not big parts of the story yet. That's a good scene. I liked the lighting with the uh, vending machines. I'll need to reread through some of um, Power's stuff then. Because, um, yeah, they kind of, they stole the cat. She only likes cats. She doesn't like humans. She doesn't get humans. But she also doesn't like devils because they stole the cat. Who was Glasses Chan there? There was some Glasses lady on screen. Oh, that explosion shot's like sick. You goobers. All right, what we got going on? Where are we going? Back to building? They proved a leave? Oh, interesting. You were doing karaoke in the uh, ending last week. I guess it makes sense they can't let her out on her own, if even if she's, like, you know, crazy. Okay. Why can't you fight it? Oh, okay. Not listening. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's kind of in ch inside my chest. It's kind of weird. Yeah. Now he literally is literally inside me. There's a cord on my chest. Not your chest. My chest. Love her eyes still. Yeah, you reckon? Okay. I reckon you guys are already getting on well enough. Better than a uh, higher color anyway. Okay. Political intrigue? Military use of devils? Where are now our Simpho gear shit? Not great. Oh, Moshiroi. Interesting. Hmm, that face. Interesting. Okay, so now we know what Makima's game is. Somewhat. The itchy nose. Disgusting.
Well, he killed all those zombies as well as the zombie devil, so he might be pretty strong. Okay. And chainsaws are scary? Hmm, okay. It's a bit of a Jujutsu Kaisen in that, actually. Kind of fearing something, making it really strong. For now, he does. The music is insane, too. He's naive. All right, where have we gone? Kind of out of town. The background's actually really cool too. Yeah, the field of view stuff in this show is great. Kind of focusing on all the right things in the right scenes. Yeah, I'm a chainsaw man. It's not a joke. I'll show you. It's kind of a scary house. Yeah. Oh my god, Denji's dead. All right. I did can't say I saw that coming, but sure. Blood on the kicks. That's very uh that's very horror movie too. That's nice. I like that. Oh, he's creepy. All right, now what about the cat? Oh, he's he's creepy as. I love that. Is that how it works? All right. I'm not sure that tracks, but sure. The lighting, awesome. I mean, yeah, he was kind of right, right? Oh, so there's no cat. Okay. Can you pull this cord on my chest, though?
What's wrong with that? Yeah, cool. Okay, no, no, this is the cat. Yes. Nyeko? Is that what we're calling it in Japanese? What? <laughs> yeah, I thought that might happen. You trusted a devil as well. Well, this is um similar to Denji, huh? And then shot of the cow. Yeah, interesting. Oh, just like straight milk from the cow. Yeah, but you grew attached, didn't you? Strange. I surely don't need to tell you the music is incredible, right? Oh my god. Oh, well, guess Power's dead. I mean, obviously she's not dead. You're a will like creep, you know that? Okay. Yeah, you're really awful. Lucky I'm a damn chainsaw man. <laughs> and couldn't find Pochita. When you're quite younger, okay. Oh, we love Pochita, don't we? Great. Oh, no, I wanted to see the action. No way. Blue balling me like this. That looked incredible. That explosion. Oh, yeah, just a normal, you know, Saturday. Saturday's not even a work day. Why'd I say that? Give me back the tits.
Yeah, they're definitely not playing with the animation. Jesus. Oh, God. Interesting. So is this similar stuff to before when it looks like CG, it isn't even CG? Well, that's a lie. Well, you don't care about saving that guy. You care about saving all those other people, though. He did just throw a car at him. That was sick. What am I looking at? Tangu Tanku? Oh, a bit of echolocation. Oh, he's cool. It's funny, we talked about this with Araragi like recently as well, right? Oh yeah, we got him. I love I love when he just does the spins. If I can stop slamming my desk to Oh yeah. Oh yeah, sick. Like the tidal wave of blood there. Awesome. Alright. Did we kill power though? Is she okay? I guess we... Yeah. I guess she's okay. Oh, yeah. Unique ED, of course. Okay. So this is like before times. Oh. Oh, yeah, this one's cool. Oh, hell yes. Yeah, no. Nah. It's like a Renaissance painting. Yes, power.
Yeah, that song was sick. Uh, right here, let's jump into a bit of analysis on episode three. Oh, uh, yeah, that episode was kick ass. Um, I think it worked both from a kind of, you know, general anime hype level. It was an awesome action scene, well directed, well paced. The the kind of enemy design was really cool. Uh, and then it also works on your kind of emotional level as well, I think. Uh, in huge part, thanks to Kensuke Ushio, who almost made me like cry on camera. Like, he is so incredible. I don't know if I'm like just like a simp for him, but anything he makes is amazing. I just don't care. Like, this isn't even probably like his top five stuff. And what he's done so far in Chainsaw Man has been immensely good. Uh, that that in general, just, yeah, talking to the top-notch production stuff, like, as I said, the backgrounds are incredible. Animation during the fights, but also some of the character stuff is really great as well. Face is all really good. Uh, we've got a little bit of intrigue going into the kind of Makima stuff. Uh, and yeah, I don't know what else to say. That was a great episode of, of just fiction, I think. It was really good. Well, we're, we're using kind of power to talk again to this uh, pet owner master servant relationship uh we're, we're seeing you know makima is you know a bit of a master manipulator we're seeing a bit of that play out as well uh hayakawa still holding this grudge to denji very deeply uh and kind of denji's naivete was on display here right he got himself out of it but will he always be able to do that if he continues being so naive we have denji's desires that were established last episode play out in this episode here. Uh, it all flowing very well, I think. Uh, yeah, so I, I, don't, I don't know where we go from here, which has been interesting as well. I guess we talk with power a little bit. Yeah, we're talking to power, you know, on the same level here now, which is good. She's exhibited some signs of empathy, which is, you know, always a good step for a devil. I don't know. I guess I'll just bring the episode up here and go through some stuff, what I liked, what I didn't like, and everything else in between. This is what I mean by character animation, even if you're not calling it character animation. Like, we'll go to power here, right? You know, there's lots of subtle stuff that shows her feelings that she doesn't want to show to Makima. I think that's important, right? Uh, anime is a visual medium. We need to exhibit emotions and that kind of thing visually, as well as through the dialogue. I think they're doing a great job of that here. This is some of the stuff that Kyoto Animation normally nails, so... Uh, obviously not on a Kyoto animation level, they're in a league of their own in that regard, but uh, but yeah, it's still really good. Additive to the experience, right? You could watch it with like kind of the sound off and still get a lot of what is going on in the scene, and I think that's important. If public safety kills a civilian hunter's devil, we're guilty of obstructing their business. So there's kind of freelance hunters as well, and if, you know, the kind of public body gets in that way of a kind of a private hunter, then uh, then that's, you know... a a bad bad she can get fired for that interesting okay that's a little bit of a twist it's very it's very political but sure power you're gonna have to keep that under control and denji you have to control her now i don't think putting kind of <laughs> thing one in control of thing two is a very good idea but uh but i don't know Ma makima's got some plan obviously so this little subtle reaction a little bit of sweat down there also gets worked up pretty easily when makima says that Maybe she's not cut out to be a devil hunter after all. Again, this this manipulation. Of course Makima doesn't isn't going to cut her right now, right? That's not what's gonna happen. But she needs power to believe that for power to do thing. So everyone's wrapped around her little finger in a way, right? It's it's <laughs> it's interesting for sure. And as established later, she immediately throws the nearest human under the bus. I think she says something to the effect of I'm, you know, kind of using Makima and public safety as a way to get uh, Miawi. Are we going to call her Miawi or, or Nieko? Whichever, whichever one we're going to go for there. So she clearly respects Makima a bit more than Denji and throws Denji under the bus. you got to arrest her right now. Arrest her under the crime of being a fake-ass liar. I don't think that's a crime. Another important line here, devils do not lie. It is only humans who do. Well, that's just absolutely lies like completely right she lies to denji in this very episode and she's a fiend then we're talking to kind of the bat devil thing at the end it lied straight to uh kind of power's face as well is that what the sweat's about like it's an obvious lie i don't know kind of watching the legs cross here of uh of one makima as well very interesting shot selection guys for sure I like this here. This is, you know, she's getting impatient, right? She doesn't want these two to fight and bicker like children. Could you quiet down? 
into yes, yes, ma'am, right away, ma'am. So Makima desires these two to work well together. Is this going to be important in her kind of overall plan regarding, I think it's something to the effect of supplying devils to warlike efforts, that kind of thing. Either way, these two need to stop acting like children, obviously, but I mean, that's some of their charm as well, right? And then, yeah, Denji gets distracted by his overall goal in all of this. So if we're kind of filling in the gaps on Power's backstory a little bit, right, the way that fiends work is that I think a devil has inhabited a human body and there's some kind of hybrid there, right? Uh, that may have happened very early in her life. She said that she's never even seen a, like a human that it wasn't screaming or, or a creature that wasn't screaming in her presence or something to that effect. Kind of Meowy was the first one that really was that for her. So can we imply that she's never been to a city and then imply that she hasn't seen all these different things before because she doesn't get out often. So she's just sees a vending machine and she's like, hey, that looks pretty sick. I'm going to stare at it like a like a goober for hours. That's fun. Like, what is this juice? Again, like this contradiction thing, right? I'm super competent at fighting and can manipulate Denji and all these other things, right? But I'm also enamored with this vending machine. Cute, fun. Makes me want to see the, the character on screen more. It's good. Denji also says here again, he says that it doesn't make it any easy to work with some girl that lies, though. So again, he knows that she's capable of it, right? But still falls for it anyway. Was just kind of the, the, the pet conceit a good thing for Denji to fall for, I guess? And it's weird, right? A lot of it is her speaking from the heart. Like, right now, she's speaking from the heart. I think you could tell, right? She's not lying. Yeah, she hates humans, basically on a demonic instinct level, as well as hating devils, because since one of them took my pet Meowie away, I only like cats. I think this is true, and can be established as true through the events of the episode. Again, it'll be interesting to see who's lying and who's not as the show progresses. Before I was able to recover Meowie, I fell into Makima's clutches. Okay, so Makima and her team found you when you were out naked in the woods, and then brought you in and made you part of the team. Okay, so it's less you're using uh, public safety and more that you're trapped by public safety. Okay, this is fun as well. I like how we, we kind of cut through any kind of serious stuff quite often. So she's like, I doubt you understand though. And he's like, yeah, I don't. That's dumb. That's fun. But he's like, I would understand if it's a dog though. So I think he kind of sees it on that level as well. And here's where we get our kind of, I don't know, inciting incidents, the wrong word, but uh, our motivation for Denji at least, right? Power goes, hey, if you get my cat back, I'll let you fondle my boobs. And he's like, yes, sir, right away, sir. Because, uh, you know, he's <laughs> he, he initially says it's dumb as hell, but he changes his entire act as soon as boobs are on the table. That's fun. But again, so I, I said during the reaction, it's kind of like Araragi, right? Because we were talking recently in Monogatari about how Araragi doesn't always say what he means. You know what I mean? So he uses the kind of lust and his teenage boyness to justify his heroic actions sometimes, especially very recently in the episodes I just watched. Uh, it seems that maybe Denji's doing something similar here. Like, hey, there may be some kind of heroic side to him in there somewhere. And he uses this as an excuse. Or, you know, he's just super horny. He doesn't care until he cops a feel. I mean, I can understand both perspectives, I mean. Yeah, this is how serious he gets. And, and we get a few like, oh, out of, out of power. They're always great. Surprised at how well it worked. That's That's good. So the way it works with power is that power is kind of trapped in the public safety building, I would imagine, or kept there. Trapped is a bit of a strong word. It needs to have some kind of bureaucratic process take place for her to be checked out and checked back in. And that's what Denji's doing here. I guess that's to make sure that we know who was last with her in case she does something like she does in the episode. There was another thing last episode where power kind of needed to stay on the rooftops because of her horns. It might scare the public. Here she's just seemingly on a tram. I don't know if it's a private tram or what, but uh, I don't know. Let's have a look. Are there any people inside of it? Not that I can see. This is about the widest shot we use. Right, so we'll keep an eye on it. I don't know if she needs to keep them hidden. And of course, we see no eye contact here from Power because she is deceiving Denji. You know, pretty classic uh, framing for a character that's telling a lie. You're going to need to fight him because he's likely going to use Meowie as a shield upon seeing me. 
And yeah, Denji doesn't care. He's just looking at the boobs. Here's where Denji kind of goes into, hey, I used to have a dog called Pochita. He lives here in my heart. And then she's like, that's stupid. Don't be sentimental. If it's dead, it's dead. Move on. She's she's coping a little bit. She obviously cares deeply for a pet and is trying to reflect these same emotions outwards. Either way, I don't think I'm ever going to get along with her. Any character that says this, the opposite is probably going to happen. So we'll see that play out for sure. Now, this was an interesting scene, wasn't it? This was uh, probably the most interesting scene in the show thus far from an overall reveal point of view. Again, this is the first time we've seen Makima without any of her kind of goons. I don't know if goons is the right word. Servants, whatever we want to call them, in the same room, right? This is when she's talking to her higher-ups. The American matter has got the Soviet warhawks crowing more loudly than ever. Bit of a weird sentence there, but sure. What is the American matter? There are rumors about the military use of devils as well. The character designs of these guys, very, um, almost Satoshi Kon. Interesting. Kind of hyper-realistic humans to an ugly degree. Show the ugly side of humanity in a way, right? The lighting. Yeah, there's something there for sure. This is bad. What's going on on screen is bad. We should interpret it as bad. Hopefully, devils will remain Japan's only enemies in the future. Makima, how are the hunting dogs that have been added to the squad performing? There's one that seems promising and another that seems interesting. So, I don't know who the promising one is. I think it would probably be Hayakawa because powers are a little bit useless. And the other one that's interesting. So, interested in, in old Denji. And we go into that a little bit later. But I wanted to talk... So, Japan's under threat of war in a way right is japan the only place that has devils is is japan an important political kind of ally because of their supply of devils or devil hunters or whatever we want to call them right if devils are going to be used in wars against japan do we need to train specialist uh devil hunters and that's why they're kind of uh kind of dogs under makima that's interesting so we're going a little bit broader than just Japan. Again, reminds me of this info gear, which is which is kind of crazy. This face here is it? Hmm, it's it's try not to get attached, right? And because they said that, she may get attached and not do the plan the way the higher ups want her to do the plan. But this face here seems pretty non-human. Seems pretty okay with doing that at this point. So maybe Denji does something to change her mind eventually. Maybe that's what we're setting up. It is hard to say at this point. And Hayakawa, being kind of the, the simp he is, he's the chauffeur. As far as I can tell, Denji's disgusting, not interesting. Of course you would think this. And he goes into a little bit more detail here. No, he doesn't go into detail, she goes into detail. All devils are born with names. And they kind of go into this concept, right, that devils are powerful based on what their kind of fear level is, if that makes any sense. So if a lot of people are scared of something, then that devil grows strong. We've seen this play out, right? Zombie devil, extremely strong, right? We've seen bat devil. People are scared of bats. That's the whole premise of Batman. Uh, that's why he chooses the bats. Uh, he seems very strong. People are scared of blood. There's definitely a fear of blood. So blood devil is strong as well. Now we go to Chainsaw. Now, people were scared of chainsaws, for sure. We, we harken back to something like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which I'm sure was an influence, right? So that's why I think Makima's interested, right? People are deeply scared of, of chainsaws, so he could be very strong. Maybe I'm grasping at straws here, but it makes sense to me. Uh, I wanted to elaborate on my Jujutsu Kaisen point as well, because I'm kind of sure this is how the power system works in there as well, or at least somewhat. So light spoilers for Jujutsu Kaisen, but there is a character that is essentially the embodiment of the kind of curses on humans, if that makes any sense. And he seems extremely powerful at the point I am in the show. So people were definitely scared of other humans and bad human emotions, right? Of course that character is strong. Again, just makes sense. I like it as a conceit for a power system, or at least in a power scaling system, I guess you would call it. I think it's pretty cool. And this is where Hayakawa says his base, right? Everyone in public safety has a real goal or motivation, except for Denji. He's just doing it to live out his life. 
he's a bad fit for our operation. Again, just this deep dislike of his kind of breezy nature, I guess you would say. He needs a real motivation. Well, we see his real motivation play out in this episode around boobs, but probably he needs something a little deeper than that. More overall, it is Makima, right? But again, we have our misgivings about Makima for sure. We also get that line leading into this scene, he thinks he can be friends with devils. And we go into a scene where he's being manipulated by said devil. Interesting. I wanted to give a shout out to the backgrounds here. Background art is lit. The colors are great. Very horror movie. Uh, Kind of the singular kind of power poles out to this house right in the distance by the sea. The part where he's getting dragged into the house is good too, which I might as well just get to. So here Denji starts asking some questions. Hey, didn't you say you shouldn't get close? Otherwise he'll use the cat as a hostage. Should you even be this close? It's like, oh, I said that? It's like, yeah, you did say that. And then, yeah, he he clues in. Right here, right? Kind of creates this hammer, bonks him in the head, and takes him into said thing. I'm guessing he needs to be alive for his blood to be sucked and it tastes good. I'm guessing that's why she doesn't just kill him here outright. So I'm not sure the goal here was to paint Power as a genuine villain, because if it was, they did a bad job. I think it's just to demonstrate her situation. I mean, at no point did I go, oh, what a twist, Power is evil. Like, she's obviously got some intrinsic motivation here, right? And yeah, the reveal on kind of the Bat Devil is great. I love the lighting here, and then we move a little bit more into the light, and we get to see his eyes kind of move out. Again, bats thrive in the dark, so of course we see those eyes like that. A bit of vampire stuff going on, maybe. And yeah, I like its character design in that it's not ever really looking straight at you. It's kind of got these inhuman eyes to the design as well. The bat kind of drains Denji and kind of grows back his arm here. Yeah, time to heal the wounds humans gave me with human blood. And then, yeah, he's about to go on a rampage again. Oh no. He continually says the blood's disgusting, but then I need to wash my mouth out with more blood, so I don't really get it, but sure. The lighting here is great as well. Denji's off to the wayside, kind of out there, a bit of a spotlight on power. Uh, can we talk about angel and devil here a little bit, looking up to kind of a bright light there? And yeah, she's waiting for Meowy to come back. I wonder if Meowy's going to be okay. Before that, kind of we get power to... Uh, once more, say her line, humans are truly foolish, you believed my story, haha, you're, you're an idiot. Again, talking to his naivety. Before the same naivety plays out from Power's perspective. Wait, before that we get this guy saying he wants to, like, kill a bunch of children or something. You know, general evil bat stuff. And yeah, Meowie gets eaten. Bye, Meowie, it was nice knowing you. Uh, but yeah, the, the music here just slaps completely. It reminds me of probably Japan Sinks the most, which is a great soundtrack from Kensuke Ushio. There's a lot of scenes, a lot of stupid scenes, by the way, in Japan Sinks where characters die and then similar kind of musical cues play out. And I think the musical cues are really good, even if the scenes are stupid. This scene is obviously better um, and the music still kills. And then, yeah, we pop into this little flashback, of course, making the Miaoi thing all the more tragic. I'm going to raise you up big so I can eat you. And then you get attached. Classic story here. Uh, and yeah, it reminds me of Denji and Pochta. Kind of out in the woods, sitting on something, just talking to your, your pet. Uh, again, give a character a pet. You make him likable. It's a cheat code. But it works. You don't normally see anime characters dirty as well. And I think they do a good job of showing how... Uh, how kind of like a wolf child she is in the whole thing. I think that's cool. And here's the here's the killer line, I think. I've killed all who've met my eyes. It's become strange to hear a voice that isn't screaming. Yeah, you, you know. We're talking to fiends, right? So we have devils. Devils that are outwardly always bad to this point, right? We've had the zombie devil and the bat devil. They've been bad guys. Uh, then we have the fiends, you know, a mix between the two. Is this talk to our human side a little bit, maybe? What does it mean to be human? Again, we've talked about that question a lot on the channel. And then, yeah, she's so stunned by the whole thing that she's just kind of standing there still looking up. When you said you couldn't pat Pochta earlier, I get the feeling now. This is an awful feeling. Or tis an awful feeling, she says. Bit of old English there. And then, yeah, she gets eaten too. 
So then, of course, the motivation turns to, hey, I need to kill the bat devil because it's got the boobs inside. But it's also clearly like, hey, I sympathize with this other character on a level that we're both pet owners and want to see some justice there. Uh, I want to stop this bat from eating a bunch of children as well. So yeah, Operation Kill This Guy is in effect. So at first, we see Denji drinking a lot of his blood out of his leg before pulling the cord and in the process talking about this time that he couldn't find Pochta. Now this is important, looking into what we were talking about with Power and Miaoi. And yeah, pretty classic little pet owner tale. I thought I'd lost my pet, and then once I found him again, we, you know... We, we made up, and I didn't want to lose him again, and I held him so close. And it's, I wonder how Power felt trying to sleep, knowing where Meowie is, and can't get access to Meowie. No wonder she did what she did, right? I would probably do the same as a pet owner in the same situation. Again, bit of empathy there. And again, he's still using this boobs thing as kind of an excuse. So he does have these noble motivations that Hayakawa's talking about, right? He just doesn't outwardly express them, or, you know... Maybe it's half and half. You know what I mean. He still wants to really touch boobs. Yeah, and then I'm not really an animation guy. I've said that in the past. Uh, I know enough about it to know that what I'm seeing on screen is excellent. So the blood's awesome. I think everybody in the scene is kind of on model, if that makes sense as well. We don't see a lot of a lot of jank. Uh, the scene's dynamic. The camera's moving everywhere. It's not static, right? Here we see the first of a few scenes where kind of Chainsaw Man or Denji or whatever we're calling him in this form directs people away from the chaos. But as the scene progresses and as he's goaded on by the devil, he loses this side of it and throws a whole car at the bat devil with a human inside of it, kind of losing some of the humanity in that action, even if it lets him become stronger. So the whole thing with the manga, right, is it's really great art as well. I, I Again, I haven't even touched the manga. To the point where it would probably make really great references for a lot of the action, I'm guessing. Having such a powerful source material in that regard to base your action scenes off probably helps a lot, I'm guessing. Again, the whole rumor surrounding, uh, of rumor I should say, it was probably fact, is that a lot of people stopped working on a lot of different things to come together to work on Chainsaw Man. A lot of Merc work went into this. A lot of different animators worked on this show. Here we see the second of the scenes where he directs people away from the chaos, or protects people in that way. Either way, yeah, this scene is very effective at what it's trying to do, for sure. And then, yeah, the third of which scenes where he finally gives up on saving everybody, throws the full car at the bat, and that's when he starts to get ahead in the fight. Kind of warms into the fight a lot in that way. It was kind of getting beat up previous to this. This is pretty cool. I'm guessing this is some kind of echolocation gun attack. I thought it was a pretty creative use of the whole bat thing. Yep, pretty classic stuff here. I, I want to touch boobs, so I'm going to go ape. So I guess this is when the bat thinks he's in deep shit, and he's right. Kind of drops the human here and, you know, kind of starts to get scared of, uh, of of the old chainsaw man. I guess this is what Markham is talking to as well, right? If you're in this form right now, scaring this powerful of a devil, then how scary can you become? And yeah, we get extremely gory here with the blood and... Chops him in half. I think I see some intestines going everywhere as well. Kind of the pool of blood, then the explosion, then the blood rain. Awesome. Great. I love the kind of liquid dynamics of the blood in the scene. It's actually pretty fun. This is where we end the episode. It's the it's the old who is the monster, who is the man situation that we're always talking about. Uh, is Denji too far gone? Will he be too far gone at some point? How powerful can he become? He's still trying to hold on to these intrinsically powerful human emotions, as well as these other human emotions around his horniness. Or is he just going to become full devil? Right? We're going to need to see. I think that's where we're heading anyway. Oh yeah, and a unique ED, which was just spectacular. Like, I don't... I don't know what else to say. I want to go watch it again right now. I mean, I can, but I'm also recording this video. Uh, the colors in it are really awesome. The song in particular is majorly standout. I love that we're getting into some different musical genres. We're not just doing our classic kind of J-pop, J-rock stuff. We're branching out a little bit more. This one's got a bit of a more of an experimental, bit more of a metal edge, which was nice. Get this part in the middle where we see Makima as a kind of a saintly figure, almost Renaissance-esque. And then, yeah, this stuff at the end, this is very Jujutsu Kaisen. Got our kind of three characters in our streetwear, just kind of walking around, vibing. Yeah, this kind of stuff, right? 
you know, this almost looks like a commercial for the for the clothes they're wearing. That's fun. And again, she still loves the vending machine. Very cool. Gives a bit of a connection to this episode in particular. Yeah, I didn't catch who who sung that song, but they're actually the the song sounded good. I want I wanted to check out the band some more. So if anybody knows, comments please. Anyway, really good episode. I hope I've broken down why it was really good. And yeah, one of the comments said I think it was last week that you know the first season should cover about a third of the manga. I'm wondering where we go in in that kind of that kind of span of time. That'll be interesting. I think there's a few twists and turns to come for sure. Either way, keen to jump into episode four right now. Right here, got episode four up here ready to go. Let me pop that up on screen. Uh, buh, buh, buh. Uh, 23 minutes and 55 seconds on this video. So sync up accordingly and link in the description for those that want it. And yeah, just going to jump in right now. Right here. Three, two, one, go. Okay, we're in the bush. Oh, is this more power stuff? Oh God, yeah. I mean, I guess do what you do what you want to do. Oh, that's another farm animal dead. Oh, and that's the bear she killed before, of course. Her blood power is pretty cool. I don't know if I sound super hyper at the moment. I've kind of had like two coffees before I started recording, so we'll see how I go. Oh, the cat hates it. Poor Meowie. Shot in the eye there. Good. Hmm. Why? Oh, that's a bad trip. You are the blood devil. Warm-blooded human. <laughs> hey, we got the cat, though. Yo, is Meow alive? You only did it for the cat, bro. I did it for the tins. <laughs> yeah, righto. Well, to you, I completely understand. I wonder how graphic we're going with the show. Are we going to so show fondling? Is that a is that a above board? Like, you mean right now? Because I will. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I won. Excuse me? What happened? Uh, uh, what am I looking at? Who the fuck are you? I hate this a lot. Okay. <laughs> Guess we're still fighting. What the hell? That's crazy. Bro, you were so close to, bro. It must almost be time for some backup to show up too, right? Some of these other characters on screen, maybe?
Oh, who? I didn't notice those characters before. Who were they? Okay. Yeah, I mean, this is a bop. Still that door. I wonder what that door is. Like in the very start of the first episode. Bit of attack on Titan in that. Always looking for a door. I hate the design of this monster. I'm sorry. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. I hate looking at it. <laughs> I guess that's the point, though. Mm, put Meowy before me. All right. I'm going to get started again. Aren't you going to lose all your blood? Yeah. You're a bit woozy, aren't you? I hate the hair on it. Oh, you two were together. Oh, he's dead. Ara Ara? Okay. I'm not sure this is sustainable, right? Yeah, right. He's still doing pretty well considering, right? Can we get some backup? I need some backup. <laughs> well, we've discussed that that's maybe not the true full motivation of it all, right? Well, it actually is in this case. Because he saved power. Or maybe he's still trying to save power. I'm out of power, bruv. What a cool dream. Was it romantic? Just cop a feel on the uh on, on those on screen. He's still fighting this hard, right? Alright, we did some damage. It's almost like a fight to the death. Murderous. <laughs> Oh, the, the voice acting. They're doing a little bit of Devilman Crybaby running too.
use in the intestines is kind of a thing in the in the fight. Interesting. Demonical? <laughs> oh, the face. Bit of potch in that. This scene has gone on longer than I thought. I really thought somebody was going to jump out and help him. Yeah, good. Get rid of the hair. We don't like the hair. Gotcha. Gotcha, bitch. Oh, that's what he was doing in the opening. Oh! Hey, yo! He's like the Jujutsu Kaisen guy as, as well, right? Ah, uh, sick. Alright, we're here to help. I like a uh, hair clip chin. She's cool too. We love him and Senpai too. These characters are cool. He seems to have some connection with um with animals as well, right? Interesting. Cutting him some apple. Cute. Into little rabbits. I do need that. It's different. Yeah. Kitsune? Interesting. Are these for me? Hmm. I don't know about fiends. Hmm. I mean, he's right. But a bunch of other stuff happened that we saw in flashbacks that, you know, we know what Power's really thinking, right? Hmm, and now he, yeah, okay, this is awesome. Exactly. Conflicting reports. I just want the apple. Condition? Okay. Is it just about protecting this lifestyle, though? I think it's a good idea to listen to him for now, anyway.
Well, to the point where you would almost die. If that's not into it, then... I don't think he's ever going to learn manners. It's not really his game. Well, you're not innocent. Is she even handy, though? Yeah, righto. What are we doing? Oh, why put so much effort into that hand moving? What the hell? Are you dressing up for somebody? Makima? Hmm. Again, you have a good sense of who's behind doors and stuff, don't you? Interesting. I'm loving all this Makima stuff. And she use is he using a powers language? Or has to use it in the report? I mean, I would too. You're fighting for them. Indeed. Well, they killed two devils, which kind of helps their case, right? Or went a long way to killing two. What a great background. Is Denji back home yet? We're just letting the scene sit. It's actually kind of nice. Is he grinding coffee? He does seem like the guy to grind his own, actually. This relaxation is going to be broken up by something. It has to, right? It's going to be so funny. <laughs> well, no, it actually wasn't. Just kind of just watching him live for a bit. an interesting washing machine. He's still making his disgusting toast. That's good. Okay. 
who is here. It sounds like power. It is power. <laughs> oh, she's cute. Oh, no. Why are you moving in? Great. How about this um this boob fondling? When's that gonna take place? Of course. Okay, so we set up like anyway, I'll talk about it later. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> oh, that's funny. You're a troll, Makima. Oh, yeah, Power said she would behave, did she? You don't like curry? Oh. She's like a child. You know how I said Denji was the worst roommate? I was mistaken. Boob time. Come on, you're in, mate. He doesn't get it. He's like, <gasps> great. Now, how, yeah, how, how graphic are we getting here? It'd be interesting, actually, because this is a pretty adult show. Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Not quite edgy levels. Only three. Boo. Yes. Yes. The music here too. I am magnanimous enough to reward you with this. Finally, the fruits of my labor. At the end of the episode. Oh. I think I'm going to like this CD the best already. Fun. All the costumes. Very anime. Oh, breaking. Okay, great. Nurse. Of course. I must pop art in some of it too. That's fun. Real tangible texture to a lot of it. Throwing away vegetables. Great. We love a dance ED, don't we? All the musical choices for these have been really good, too. Right here, time to jump into a bit of analysis on episode four. I guess overall what we're doing with this episode is just establishing our characters fully and totally for the goings-on forward, right? In a lot of ways, this does feel like a bit of a... This feels like the prologue, right? We're about to jump into the real stuff, the real meat. 
We have Hayakawa kind of changing his tune with respects to Denji. Maybe not so power, but anyway. We have Denji grappling with a lot of uh, these different dream ideas that he has going on, right? This whole fondling breasts thing, and then that power wasn't enough to overtake that uh, that devil, was it? It wasn't, in the end, enough for him to actually, you know, get it done. What does that say? Does it speak to his greenness or does it speak to a flaw in his approach? I think that's interesting too. Power obviously changing her tune with respect to some humans now based on what they've uh, they've done for her. We're going to talk about Power's humanness here in this first scene too, which I'll pop up on screen. Um, and yeah, Hayakawa, bit interesting, a little bit of intrigue there, especially with Makima. Again, Makima's kind of, you know, the puppeteer, everyone around her fingers. I think that's definitely where we're going with this, for sure. Uh, we got some slight introduction to a few characters. There was a seemingly tomboyish senpai character with a, with an eye patch, which I am fond of. There was a bit of a Mika character with hair clips as well. There was a guy in the back. I don't really know what his deal was. He seemed a bit meek, too. It seems like those two were the, were the rookies. All these episodes have closed in a way where it's not immediately like clear where we're going next. And I think that makes me want to watch more. Obviously not this week because that's a little bit insane, but uh, uh, in the future for sure it's like a it's Moorish, you know. It's it's that's what you want out of a good show, I think. So definitely succeeding in that regard. So we're starting off here. We see Power, you know, murdering various animals for their blood, as she is the blood devil and likes blood and you know all these other things around blood, which she explains. And again, the human connection there for sure. But it's important that we make the distinction between these animals and Miaoi. You know, it's the first step, right? Great little touch here, the blood th flowing in the stream too as she kind of uh, kind of sucks the bear, I guess. I'm glad that the cat made it out. I think they're they're cute together, both the cat and, uh, and Power. Again, um, I've talked about it before, having a pet makes a character endearing every single time. Show character caring for pet, I'm, I'm instantly in, I'm on your side. Great little shot selection here, not exactly fully unique, but, you know, reflection in the eyeball... And again, we're we're changing our uh, our kind of uh, a focus in the scene there as well, you know. Uh, background then foreground, good stuff. I like how we're demonstrating the desperation here from Power as well, as she's like, "Okay, I need to find a human as soon as possible to get Meowie back. I need Meowie back right now." So why do I run? Why do I search for a human? All lives are worth the same to me. Well, that's what I thought anyway. And again, we're talking about. What it means to be a human, what human connection is, why we love, why when that love goes away, we, we strive so hard to get it back. Lots of stuff here we can talk about, right? I think the most relevant connection to power is what she says about blood and its warmness. Yeah, just kind of as we see the blood escape this wound here, right? I love blood. The taste, the smell, the sense of mortality, another aspect of being human. And then there's something I only recently realized. The blood is warm as she's sleeping next to the cat. Effective scene. Great. Good job, Chainsaw Man. And yeah, we jump from, you know, I'm looking into the cat's eyes inside the bat, and then I close my eyes, and then I see Denji. And Denji's like, it's time for my field copping right now. These actions are later repeated by power in the scene in the toilet, where she points to her chest and does this as well. It's kind of their thing they got going on. I was talking about this with uh, with Simpho Gear. Circular nature of an episode, something at the start linking to something at the end, makes it feel cohesive and whole. Good stuff. Power says, since Meowie is free, you may fondle my chest. And Denji Boy is just over the moon of that concept. Look at him go. He loves it. Nothing bad will happen here at all. Yeah, something bad happens here, of course. And yeah, it's the most horrific thing I've ever seen in my life. It, it's kind of a six-legged, six-titted worm monster hair thing and i hate looking at it i really really hate it if this this is like my sleep paralysis demon if this thing's at like the end of my bed when i'm sleeping i i don't want i don't want to be there um yeah hate this design definitely the scariest thing in the show so far and then yeah that's a huge what the fuck moment leading into the opening so we learned some things in the initial seconds of this scene we learned that hey this is the you know, worm that was, you know, tangentially related to the bat. I think they were romantically connected. Um, 
and hey, you killed my like boyfriend. We were going to eat all humanity together, but you're cute. So I guess I'll, you know, settle for just eating you instead. Uh, kind of a nice gesture, I guess. Uh, we're also establishing here that power can't move. I don't know why power can't move. I guess she was just eaten. That probably doesn't help. Power also suggests that Denji takes the cat and flees, putting the cat's life before herself. Which is very, very interesting, huh? Does it speak to a low sense of self-value or a high sense of value of the cat? I don't know. Maybe it's a combination of both. Denji is low on blood and can't go all out to attack this kind of uh, devil. I forget what we're calling them all the time. Devils. This is the leech devil I think we established. I thought it was more of an earthworm, but sure. I guess leeches make more sense for it being powerful and people being scared of leeches. Not many people are scared of earthworms, I don't think. The VA work on the uh, on the old worm leech thing is pretty good. Definitely very creepy. Throws a few ara aras in there as well, which is uh, never unwanted. And yeah, just does a great job of looking disgusting. And again, not an animation guy, but it is still stellar. They've done a great job here. It's a fantastically dynamic sequence. I love how he grabs the intestines and uses something in the space to fight rather than just relying on his chainsaw powers that can't manifest at the moment. We see a bit of simultaneous character work here. Of course, Power is powerless right now. She has to lie down and merely watch uh, Denji do his thing. And she's thinking, all this to merely fondle a chest. She even says at one point that it's absolutely demonical that somebody would even do that, right? This is kind of the point where her opinion on Denji kind of changes. She sees how into it he is. She sees how he's fighting for her in a way still, right? I don't know. She may find that appealing. I don't know. Maybe not attractive romantically, but enough to be a friend, I think. At the same time, we have Denji's stuff, right? Where he is thinking to all these people and their noble dreams, right? He's thinking to Hayakawa's kind of motivation and dream and he's thinking to those police officers with their kids and he's thinking to power with the cat i don't have anything like that and i'm going to show you that my desire is still powerful enough to overcome all of yours bit of shonen stuff in that right i want to be the best like no one ever was but of course he falls short i think that's an interesting little look at that even the worm talks about it right to think he was killed by somebody with such a trashy dream Getting all these flashbacks right, such a foolish reason, everyone is serious about this except you, causes him to think about it, and double down. And this is where he kind of snaps. If I kill you, right now, or he uses the word murderize, that means your dreams are weaker than fondling a tit. It's a challenge, he's throwing down the challenge. I think his movements get increasingly demonic here, we can talk a little bit about a devil man crybaby run on all fours, losing a bit of the humanity, right? We see a little bit, there's a shot later I want to bring up. It's where he looks a little bit like Pochita. Firstly, we see power remark dem demonical, dem demoniacal. It's not a word, but sure. Yeah, he is the one, right? Yeah. Yeah, a little, little bit of that humanity going here for sure. One side's taking over. You can see it on the, uh, the left side of his face there. So yeah, it makes one final jump up and pierced by the tongue so it didn't work you got caught out in the end right and then we immediately see this right i don't know what this is this is like the kitsune right so he activates his power that's what we see at the end of uh the opening as well so we kind of got that knowledge in our heads we immediately know who this is we know that hayakawa is here to save the day and his power is sick it says con giant wolf or kitsune head out of the ground and destroys the adversary. Seemingly this demon that he controls, or controls, is a bit stronger than the other ones, for sure. And yeah, this shot here, this is such a manga panel. Like, you can tell, right? And yeah, we're introduced to these characters. Uh, of course, as I am to do, I am fond of both of the girl characters, the guys in the middle. Yeah, take them or leave them. <laughs> yeah, I want to get to know the, the, the two on the outside, for sure. But this is a great hype moment, you know, we're expanding at the world a little bit more. It's nice seeing some different characters and that kind of thing. There's immediately a lot of personality in the characters. This is Himeno Senpai, so obviously older, wiser, got the eye patch, a bit battle-weary. 
doesn't seem phased by what's going on, as opposed to the two rookies, which were just back here. Looking around, looking nervous, and then immediately to attention. Nice little introductory character work. We now have some expectations surrounding these characters. And yeah, the smoke clears, and that kind of action scene is done. How long was that into the episode? About halfway. Interesting. I thought it was shorter than that. So Denji wakes up in the kind of, I don't know what you'd call it, hospital room, I guess. He's got his arm reattached. He's feeling all better. He's kind of slept it off in a way. And his body has regenerated through the proliferation of blood. Now, I like the use of the apple in this scene. It's kind of a, you know, I've got what you want in the form of this apple, and I'm going to only give it to you once you agree to my demands. It's used as a bit of a device there. I think it's cool. So this is where Denji questions Hayakawa on this. You seemed pretty friendly with that devil back there, so what's the deal? Devil hunters form contracts with devils in order to fight against them. So it begs the question, right? How far are you removed actually from being a fiend, right? I know fiends are probably a little closer and the devil has more chance of taking control, but at the end of the day, you're still in a contract with one, right? I don't know. Everyone has this other side to themselves, right? in this uh this kind of devil that's going on, right? And we we need to control that. Again, Hayakawa explains with his little bandage there that he's always losing, you know, some skin or a part of his body to use the kind of kitsune the way he does. Devils yearn for the death of humans. Same goes for fiends. Power seems cool, though. And then Hayakawa's like, hey, I actually did some investigating. It seems like she tried to kill you. Are you sure about that statement? And of course, he's like, hey, I don't know why, but you're trying to protect a devil. Again, it seems like you're on their side. That's a bit sus. Then Hayakawa has kind of a change of heart. He thinks through various things that he heard while doing the investigation, while Denji was probably in hospital. My daughter would like to meet the chainsaw guy. He saved me. The devil threatened to eat me back at the office. But now that I think about it, he was wearing a public safety uniform. I'd like to thank him. So we have these two, right? These two I talked about previously. And then this guy, right? This is when the devil side starts to take a bit more control, and he just threw the whole car at the dirt devil with the guy inside. So this causes conflict in Hayakawa's mind. He's like, hey, these two were saying he was cool, but this guy says he wasn't. Again, this whole, even the vignetting, it's like cloudy, right? Interesting. I think that's cool. So if you're willing to accept one condition, I'll let it slide. I'll let the whole blood devil, fiasco, everything else slide. You need to do what I say when I say it. Simultaneously handing him the apple as well. Clever. And yeah, uh, Denji begrudgingly agrees. I mean, it's probably a good idea to listen to your senpai anyway. But what if we're met with a situation where we can see where we're fighting a fiend or a devil that obviously has some humanity left in there? Are we still going to listen to what Hayakawa has to say? He's kind of blackmailing you at this point, right? Interesting. We'll see where it goes. Is Hayakawa going to change his tune by that point by getting closer to these two through living together? That's another option we could go for, for sure. And then the central conceit of the kind of scene is revealed. The line where he says, power seems cool, though, becomes very important. The kind of part where he's explaining away kind of the whole murderous intent situation as well. Very important. This is to get power out of trouble. I don't think Denji knows that, but he still said they're all the right things. And this comes back later. It's another reason that power is fonder of Denji. It seems that Himeno is uh, at least somewhat associated with uh, Hayakawa and suggests, hey, this is this a good idea? It'll look really bad if she goes on to then kill somebody if you let her go. Where devil hunters, if they're handy, will put them to work. He kind of uses a very workman justification for what he's doing. And he looks very serious here. We're not making friends. This isn't what this is about. A little pout there from Power too. We love to see it. As always, scenes where we have a character solo are very interesting. They don't need to put on a front in front of anybody else. So what do they do? We see him go to knock. Not knock. Still strain up all his hair and that kind of thing before entering Makima's office. This little smirk from Makima, right? Again, we know that she has very good senses and that kind of thing. We don't know exactly what her power is yet, but she's good at this. 
She knows he's behind there, straightening up his looks to present to her. This little smirk is maybe I've got him wrapped around my finger still. Interesting. A lot said with a little. I think it's very cool. Yeah, I mistaked it during the reaction. He's using quotes from Denji. That's fun. And something I didn't pick up in the reaction. Uh, Hayaka was also lying here. Just straight lying to Makima. So again, I mean, Makima sees through all this, right? I think she knows that he's lying. She even probes a little bit further. She's like, well, they went awfully far, right? And they didn't have jurisdiction. They really should be punished. And then Hayakawa still pushes back. He's like, nah, considering they killed two devils, I think they actually should be fine. No punishment involved. Then there's this line. You seem a little more flexible now, Hayakawa. And I agree. I think he does. He's turned a little bit of a leaf. Even if he says they aren't friends, he's willing to cover for them at least. It's a little bit of progress for sure. And then we walk off into the night. Very interesting little scene. I think that's cool. Now, I think this is fantastic filmmaking. We're taking our time. We're having a quiet morning with Hayakawa, right? He's just going to do his thing for a while, sleep in bed, you know, makes his coffee, skip ahead a little bit, you know, washes his face, brushes his teeth, bit of coffee, gets the newspaper, goes outside to have a smoke, just to, you know, enjoy the view of, of the city. Measures out his washing detergent like this. He's definitely a certain way inclined, isn't he? Starts making a bit of curry for dinner, cutting up the vegetables. Then we hear a knock at the door. Don't we, right? Denji remarks, also on all fours, which is fun. The hell's this? A devil? Then we see some blood powers knock out the door handle, and of course we know who it is. I knew who it was from even the knock. It is one power. She has arrived. The first thing she does is say that the home is shit. Awesome. Uh, and as I said in the reaction, I thought Denji was the worst uh, was the worst roommate, but uh, Powers got him beat, for sure. And yeah, Makima's kind of trolling Hayakawa here, right? Oh yeah, I thought it would be fine to put Power in your room as well. Is this because she detected the light? Is this a somewhat of a punishment? Maybe. Maybe there's more to it than that as well. Either way, the, the kind of atmosphere we had going in the start of the scene is now completely gone. The, the two meatheads in the background are just kind of just running around ruining everything which is always fun and here's where she has a little chuckle to himself you don't need to worry power said she would behave are you really gonna trust her that's fun and yeah power is just the worst let's go through the things shall we she's like a child she won't eat any vegetables in anything so beautiful you know veggie curry or veggie and a bit of meat in the curry look look, look at this meal here like it looks Looks excellent. Where is it? Yeah. Tasty. Eat it. It's got vegetables in it. I don't want it. Again, like a child. This is interesting from Denji. Shows some respect to the farmers who grew these veggies. Uh, he, he grew up in a farming town, essentially, right? Or at least a rural-ish town, so he would have some respect for farmers, for sure. She, she, she doesn't flush the toilet. That's a big no-no. She also clogs it with way too much toilet paper. This is a toilet that has a sink on the top weird this is a good way to conserve space she doesn't bathe because you know bathing is against her code <laughs> i don't know you should bathe more often and then yes confides in her cat causing these two hey maybe these two can bond over their mutual kind of hatred of power that's pretty good hey shit devil your turds are stuck to the damn toilet and won't come off like flinging the the brush like that that's very fun and then, yeah, we we jump into the final scene of kind of the, the couple episodes we're doing today. We kind of have the payoff for the very start of the two-episode little arc, too. Hey, you get to follow my breasts. Have fun. And here's where we see the hand, the hand gestures, the same ones at the start of the episode. She lays out the ground rules. You have earned three squeezes of my breast. One for your rescue of Miaoi. A second for slaying the Bat Devil. And a third for protecting me from Top Knot. I'm imagining Top Knot is Hayakawa. And then, yeah, we end on this kind of angelic lighting on uh, on power. And, yeah, he's going to fondle some breasts. The long-awaited breast fondling will take place. Again, I wonder how etchy will go with all of it. I would imagine it'll be relatively tame, I think. I don't think it's really a sexual show, more just a mature one. So I don't think we'll go too, uh, too crazy with it. Yeah, then we get our little, you know, fan service ED. You love to see it, right? Reminds me a bit of, you know, 
where is she? Chica. Hey, Chica. Um, yeah, Chica always gets the dance EDs with all the, you know, fun stuff. I commented that I like the textures in a lot of this. You can see that this has been painted. There's a bit of pop art kind of polka dot stuff on the uh, on the actual character there as well. And yeah, we basically see Power in various, I don't know what you would call them, anime fetishy costumes. So we got Bunny Girl. Let's break them down. We got Bunny Girl. We got Cop with the handcuffs, of course. Maid, classic. Oh, a bit of a bit of like a rocker chick. And I wanted to mention this one in particular because she does a bit of um like she like breaks the scenery there. Yeah. Nurse, of course. Uh I didn't know that like graduation garb was one, but sure. Cheerleader, classic. Uh I guess like boxer? It's not really fetishy at all. I've been duped. Chinese dress. Throwing various vegetables away as well, that's fun. There's this part where everybody is following her tune except for one Makima, of course. This is great, a little bit of personality for these characters we haven't met too as well. This one on the far right seems a bit blushy, which is, you know, take it or leave it. Yeah, and then we go through a pretty elaborate dance sequence that is obviously very well animated. Uh, the song has a lot of energy as well, matches power for sure. I still probably prefer episode 3 ED. I'll probably rank them all by the end of the show for sure. I guess what it speaks to is the amount of effort put into the show that each of these have unique EDs that are all fantastically animated and really creative. That's just, that's great. You love to see something really expensive come out. And yeah, we'll end on that little cute shot of power. Uh, so yeah, ending ending today's session. So yeah, today, very good episodes. I, I really enjoyed both the episodes, kind of had that emotional and kind of story thematic stuff going on, as well as just being really kick-ass and fun. Uh, kind of really hitting that balance really well. I'm enjoying the characters in particular. I'm guessing you know I'm fond of power. Power is very cool. Hayakawa was growing on me a lot too. You know, you start a character in a, you know, bit of a douchey position and then improve him. You know, classic stuff. Denji's still a little bit, but we'll, we'll say he could improve. Uh, Makima is definitely evil. Well, evil is a strong word, actually. Manipulative. Um, so my kind of question from last episode probably is manipulation for sure. And yeah, just some clever scenes, you know. So yeah, double thumbs up. We'll probably try to do two episodes next week, but we'll see how we go. Next week is shaping is a little bit more busy. Uh, and we're heading towards Christmas at a rapid rate, so we'll need to account for that as well. Either way, uh, thank you very much for watching. Just going to do my uh, shill stuff quickly. If you like the video, consider liking the video. If you like the video and want to see more, consider subscribing to the channel. Comment below anything you thought about the episode, anything I could do to improve my presentation, comment below. I'm doing follow for follow on Twitter, so follow me on Twitter if you'd like me to follow you back. And the Discord. Join the Discord. Love the Discord. Discord, Discord, Discord. Right here. Thank you very much for watching this week, and I hope to catch you again next week. Right here. Thank you very much. Bye.